He's the pick for me. I can't trade away from a player this good. And this is what I've been talking about throughout the whole off season, Zach. People will argue that it's not a need right now. I love the pick. I think that's the pick. I think we're turning the card in, Zach. Let's do it. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Foots. Listen, I've been watching this dude's channel for a while. We hooked up. I actually reached out to him in the comments just because I'm like, yo, Zach does great work. He, he's he's locked in in the draft scene. Uh, he's locked in in the YouTube Cowboys community. Zach, double move. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? I'm good, man. Um, this will obviously be posted on both of our channels, but we wanted to do a seven-round mocker, uh, uh, Zach, because everybody around, I think, YouTube Cowboys draft community has been doing uh, two, three rounds, right? We know how important this draft is for the Cowboys. Yeah. I think it'll be cool to get a Cowboys a full scope of a team building exercise and get him a full seven round mop. Well, that sounds good to me. Um, there's quite a few guys, especially third, fourth, fifth round, that I really like a lot. Um, yeah. that could really help this team. Maybe names that people aren't aware of quite yet, but I'm excited. Let's do it. Let's do it. And and Zach, you know, we talked about a pre-show. What do we think about trades here? Before we before we actually jump into the mock, are we trying to go back? Are we trying to move away from players? Or are we standing in a pick in BPA? What are we doing? My impression is it would be nice to trade back. I think a lot of people think like that, especially because the Cowboys are going to be without a pick for 85 picks, I believe. Yeah, 85, that's 90 picks, nothing in the fourth round. So yeah. I think it'd be nice to be able to move back a little bit, still get a quality player in the first round. I think there's enough prospects that you could do that and and pick up a fourth rounder in the process. So yeah, let's let, let's run it, Zach. So all right, you got it, bro. And, and as we expected, Caleb Williams it looks like he's number one off the board. I don't think that will be a surprise, Zach. Um, no, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it seems like a consensus number one at this point. And then okay. uh, and it's, it sure as shit uh, they go uh, uh, Drake May. <laughs> yeah. A yeah, couple boy. people off the board right before the Cowboys pick. Jackson Powers Johnson goes to the Steelers at 20. Johnny Newton to the Dolphins at 21. Latu Latu off the board to the Eagles at 22. And Graham Barton, the tackle from Duke, that'll most likely be on the interior, is gone at pick 23. Yeah, and see, the Dolphins losing Wilkins, right? Losing Christian yep. Wilkins. This is how free agency does affect the draft. I think that Graham Barton, if the if my if Minnesota picks at 23. That's interesting because yeah. I don't know if the simulator accounted for that. But in this yeah. in this exercise, we'll say that they do. I've told people Seattle, Steelers, Jackson Power Johnson, don't lock into these guys yeah. because that's a very realistic situation. But lo and behold, look who we have on the board, Zach. In this situation, I think that the Cowboys would have to stand in the pick. Now, to me, how do we rate these tackles versus these receivers, Zach? So I think when you look at it with just with the tackles for right now, when you look at it with Mims and Latham sit, sitting there, do we think Latham can play left tackle? Because both of these guys have been right tackles, right? Yep. Mims' entire career is eight, eight total games or eight starts. But I think is one of them a better left tackle than the other, not knowing what they look like at left tackle? Yep. So with Mims... Super athletic guy, big freak of nature. I like I like Mims a lot, but that's my thoughts on the tackles. And then the main receiver that really sticks out right here is Brian Thomas Jr. That's how I see it. How do you see these these uh, positions and the value? So I, I'm I'm glad that you said that because this is the questions that we have to ask ourselves. I think that this tackle in this O line class stretches more than people think. Mike McCarthy was at Notre Dame's pro day today. Blake Fisher is a guy who I've watched a lot, watching so much of Joe Alt. You're like, whoa, who's this other tackle on the right side? Mm. Here's the deal. Is J.C. Latham right now a better player than Tyler Smith? To me, the answer is no. No. Is Amarius Mims, who had a great combine workout, but little nugget, he wasn't able to finish his combine workout because of the injury. Mm -hmm. Is he a better player than Tyler Smith right now? The answer for me is no. To me, if you're trying to upgrade this team, 
and you want to make sure that you can continuously get better. We saw in the playoff game, I do love Brandon Kicks, but Cook, excuse me, but he's a small target. He's a small body. You did just lose Michael Gallup. Mm -hmm. If I have Brian Thomas Jr. on the board, he's the pick for me. I can't trade away from a player this good. And this is what I've been talking about throughout the whole offseason, Zach. These receivers, to me, stack higher than some of these tackles in these guards. Yes, I do like these guys, but I'm not going to force a pick if I have a receiver who's better and I can get better value later in the draft at O-line. And especially yep. if it's going to be a swing guy. And these are – right now, Latham is a right tackle only for me. Yep. I have no film of him playing left tackle. Yep. The pick is going to be Brian Thomas Jr. Yep. Quick nugget, too, about the wide receiver room for the Cowboys. People will argue that it's not a need right now because you do have Cooks. You have CD, um, who's going to get a big contract coming up. And you have Tolbert. You have these guys, but Cooks is gone after next year or after this year, very likely. Tolbert hasn't really shown us that he can be a wide receiver three in the NFL. I do have hopes that he could, you know, take a step forward. But is he better than Brian Thomas Jr.? Absolutely not. Cabante Turpin hasn't really shown a ton in the passing game, you know, a little bit of potential, but his contract's over after this year. Yeah. Uh, this year as well. So it is a sneaky need. And I, and if Brian Thomas Jr. is sitting there, I love the pick. I think that's the pick. I think we're turning the card in, Zach. Let's do it. I think another thing to think about just Brian Thomas Jr.'s usage. So, when you have a player like Malik Neighbors, I think when watching film, there were times that Brian Thomas Jr. was in. You got to remember, I was on him high and very early. I was high on him very early in the process. When you talk about a guy who can get in windows, attack the deep thirds, attack the, the deep middle of the field right now, 4-3-5 guy, I think it's a no-brainer. Uh, you know, there will be people who, who will argue his, oh, uh, how is he after the catch? Listen, we need a guy who can stress the field, who's a yep. big target for Dak. I like the pick. Yep. I, I, it definitely <laughs> adds a different dynamic that this offense doesn't have right now, especially this, with the size and the speed in insane combination, for sure. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so some names off the board right before. Edge Braylon Trice from Washington, Edgerin Cooper, linebacker from Texas A&M, and Chris Jenkins, uh, interior guy from Michigan. So some names still on the board. Uh, Jatavion Sanders, Texas uh, tight end from Texas, Jonah Ellis, edge from Utah, Rook Okoro Huro, defensive interior from Clemson, Jonathan Brooks, and Junior Colson, trying to and Jalen Wright. Yeah, that's those are some good names, uh, Zach. I'm really high on Christian Haynes. Um, I don't know if you've watched him. Um, I don't know if that would be the pick. I don't know if we want to go interior. I know you got this pick. Um, I don't know if I'm, I don't want to sway you too much, but some of these names, <clears throat> what position are we thinking here is that? So I think because we go wide receiver and, mm -hmm. and like you said, the, the guard guard tackle class does stretch, you know, pretty, pretty good. I would say into the second round, maybe not as much as the wide receivers, but it still stretches. I have watched Christian Haynes and his senior bowl stuff. Yes. He looked like a good, a powerful guy. Uh, he looked good in pass protection. He looked like somebody that could get to the next level, get his hands on guys. This is a little tangent, but Zach Frazier had a tendency to miss in space. So when he would get to God, he could get there, but he would miss when he did. Christian Haynes, it looked like, I know he's a guard, but he did a better job of hitting his target when he did get there. He didn't have linebackers dipping underneath his block or, you know, sidestepping him. I like Christian Haynes a lot, and I think it is a need. It, he would be worthy of the pick at 56. Wow, that's a great nugget, uh, uh, Zach. You know, I, I definitely see a powerful player with Frazier, but I get what you're saying. Maybe overextended, not running his feet when he gets to the next level. And, you know, these backers are quick. There's backers in the NFL that won't let you get your hands on them. They play yep. through trash very well. I would be very comfortable with this pick. I think he's plug and play. Right now, yes, you would probably kick TJ Bass back to a swing guy, yeah, which is fine. I mean, this is the NFL. Will McClay, I love you, but my job is to replace you. That's his saying. Is there anybody else on the board before we make that so, pick? Two players, you love. and they're both they're both running backs. I yes. really like Jalen Wright from Tennessee. Speed, Electric speed. guy, big play, waiting to happen, fast. What he sticks his foot in the ground, he's he's gone. I mean, nobody's catching him. 
Didn't see one person catch him on film from behind. And then another guy, my running back one in this class, who is going to be available or who is available right now, I believe, in Trey Benson. I know PFF's nice. not as high. PFF's not as high on him. Ranked 86th. Me, that's my number one back. He's my back. Is, he's, is, he's my, my uh, number one back as well. Yeah, yes. he's my he's my guy. I know we took a wide receiver. I know we didn't address the O-line, but that is something to think about. But since we didn't, I, I think I would wait for a running back into the third round because there are a couple of guys, maybe we'll see him on here, that I also like. I don't have to get Trey Benson. We'll go with the uh, the guard, Christian Haynes from Connecticut. That sounds good to me. Nice. And you know what? I, I feel great about that pick, Zach. Um, t- To be honest, this this the, the rest of this this month, until April, the theme is plug play. I need guys yes. who, are, who, are, who, are, who are game day ready. The yep. minute you get off the bus, you do your rookie intro. They got the video, the whole nine. Okay, let's go play football. Yep. The development part was last year. Schoonmaker, Mozzie, kind of figuring things out. These guys, I need to know what you can do. And I think Brian Thomas Jr., And if you got those two and that's your stack, I think you feel good on day two having yep. Haynes and, and Brian Thomas Jr. Now. For me, with this third pick, because these three, I call this the big three. Got to hit on these three picks. Backer, linebacker. Let's go to the backer room and let's see what we got there. Because to me, this is where we, we, we need to make our money. And we got some good names that I'm looking at right now. And so I'll be honest with you. I'm a huge Maris fan. I, I stay away from his last name, but I'm going to try Maris Luafau. It, it, these names in this draft are, are tricky. Yeah, they are. I'm not as high on Jeremiah Tr- Jeremiah Trotter as everybody else. I have size issues. Gives me a little bit of the Kobe Dean flashes. Um, I see a, a will only, and I don't know if Mike Zimmer would be able to deploy him with having overshone year two. Who I'm hearing that he's making his way back. He looks like he's been in the weight room. With having Eric Kendricks, who the reason why he came to Dallas is because he's going to play Mike. I think a, a player like Maris, let's put a check by him, and now let's look in the running back room, Zach, because between those two, I I, I want to see what we have. Okay. You can ask 12 different people about running back ranking, Zach, and you'll get 12 different answers. Yeah. So while we do have Trey Benson as running back one, there are people who believe in Jonathan Brooks, even with the injury, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Even with the injury, they have Jonathan Brooks as running back one. There are people who still believe in Braylon Allen, even with him not testing as, you know, a top tier running back. And, and if this was the case, the pick for me would have to be Trey Benson. I don't know just how realistic this is, but he may not be for everybody. I love Maris. The pick for me would be Trey Benson. We're drafting Trey Benson in the third round. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. And I do like a lot of these other running backs that maybe you could get in, you know, <laughs> in the fourth, fifth, or sixth. But I just feel like Benson, that's your running back for the next four to five years. That's yeah. the guy. He could he could be your workhorse back. He's got big playability. He can make guys miss. I like Trey Benson a lot, and I like that pick. Yeah, I think one of the things about Benson that was so underrated was his yards after contact. The uh, the percentile was really high. I think he does a good job setting blocks up. That that Florida State scheme, a lot of pin pull, a lot of guards getting out in space. He really he really was very Emma Smith esque with his patience. I'm not saying he's Emma Smith. Obviously, Emma Smith with the Florida. Yeah. Trey Benson with the Florida State. He transferred into Florida State. He really sets his blocks up well. It would be between him and Blake Corm. I'm a huge Blake Corm fan. I have I have Benson stacked a little bit higher, but I would never bet against Blake Corm. Yeah. Obviously, we're going through the fifth round, and this is what it'll be like on draft. Yeah. yeah. And this is that's what I was going to mention. This is the tough part about not trading back. If nobody wants to trade back with you, if you want, if you have somebody there like we did that you really want to take. That's the rough part. You you are going through a crazy stretch. That's what happens when you don't trade back. A lot of names start flying off the board. All right, so we're here. Uh, Drake Nugent, Michigan center is off the board. Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver from Rice is off the board. Uh, brother with, Brothers with uh, Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey. Um, Ooh, Trevor Birch, Egan, another like Michigan. Michigan has so many linemen in this draft. Oh, my goodness. Zach Zenter is a name that I love that, you know, Cowboys fans and, and – 
play, people around the NFL haven't been as high. I don't know if it was the injury, but I love Zach Zinner, the guard. He has Michigan. I mean, excuse me. He went to Michigan. He has um, <clears throat> he has center flex. He plays center as a rookie. I mean, excuse me, as a freshman. Um, and he he could play center as well. I love Zach Zinter. Let's look at the tackle room, and then let's look at the D-line room. Okay, so Caden Wallace is a name. Doesn't have a lot of experience, but Caden Wallace is a tackle who obviously Olu Fashionu was the headliner there. But Wallace is a name that I watched him being um, in the Big Ten playing against Maryland. He had some good reps. I think he was only a starter for one year. He's a name. Let's look at the D-line room here um, because – the D-line class actually does stretch pretty deep, and I want to see if there's any D-linemen that made it. Do you want to look um, at edge or interior? Let's go interior. Jordan Jefferson is a name that I, uh, I'm i uh, a little familiar with. We can click on their player profiles too as well. Yeah, so with Jefferson, I you know, obviously I was his, his teammate, is really the one who I was really high on in, in Mason Smith. I don't know. Did yeah. he already get drafted or? Yes. Um, so Jordan Jefferson, LSU. Let's talk about him. Um, I saw a guy who was more of a three. And do we want to get a, a, a three? And that's the question. Are we are we are we buying in? The, I, I feel like the Cowboys need bodies, Zach. Big yeah. bodies. So I do, I do think the Cowboys need an interior defensive lineman. That room is is thin edge edges as well. I think on you know just get as far as bodies, you lo lost quite a few guys. Let, let's go, Jordan Jefferson. I mean, at, there's times that he plays tall. Yep. He was on Bruce Feldman's freaks list. I do remember mm -hmm. that. Um, let's go, Jordan Jefferson. I like that pick a lot. That works. Just throwing bodies at the position. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that, that that would uh that makes sense. Yeah. Is there a position that we want to double dick it? Oh, oh man. Yeah. I I, I you I already see the pick right here. Yeah, Tanner Bordellini. Is that <laughs> yours? Well, so I like Hopper. <sighs> you like the oh, linebacker. Yeah. Do so are we okay? Let's talk about it. Zach, are we okay with rolling out? Because remember, we didn't go lab linebacker in the third round, Zach. So are we okay with rolling out Eric Hendricks? Overshone and Damone Clark. Are we? How do we feel, Zach? Because that's that's the question that Cowboys fans are gonna say. Okay, we didn't address this here, and it's oh man, Jason McCullough is staring at you. That's that's another good back that I like. Yep. Alabama's running back, but I would not be mad at Tanner Bordellini. The way he tested, I, I think you pretty much. But see, Hopper has some stuff. Can you go wrong with a Wisconsin center? No, you can't. How many starting years the Cowboys have gotten out of a Wisconsin center? <laughs> <laughs> Zach, Zach, he's the pick because if nothing else, you know, I think that everybody's you, you, you see the videos with Hoffman and on IG and you, you hear him talk, but do we know? Like, do we know yes. if, if Brock Hoffman's gonna be able to hold his own for a year? Tanner Bordellini tested through the roof, roof. yes, at the combine. I, yes. I mean, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. I just know he moved well. Under Former five wrestler second 40. Was it? Mm-hmm. Four nine six, I believe. What's his height weight profile? Let's look. Six four three ten. So okay. a little lighter than Biotish. I believe Biotish was more like three fifteen. And I know that was some of our issue with Biotish. But you know, it's crazy. I see a better player on film. Creed Humphrey is less than that. Creed Humphrey's playing at three oh eight. And moves him and him and Kelsey move so well with the pull yep. game and everything. Let's go, um, Tanner Bordellini. Quick thing about the the linebacker room. You were asking if you're comfortable with rolling out Kendricks, uh, Clark, and Overshone. Absolutely not. <laughs> because Overshone's injury, he's a rookie. That, yes. that, that's it. You're going right back to a rookie. So it's almost like Jonathan Brooks. He's a rookie, and he's coming off of a, an ACL injury. Yeah, bad one. You know, and not, not really, but do you feel like Hopper is competing with those guys for a job on the field. Like, is he getting reps this year? Who do you think has a better chance to start right now? Is it Bordellini over Hoffman or is it Hopper over, over Schoen or Clark? You, you'd have to go Tanner Bordellini. Um, I, I think that Hopper will probably be a special teams guy only. Mm. Whereas Bordellini, he would have a chance to start. And it might not even be in 2024 for Bordellini. It could be a 2025 thing, you know, yeah. like he, I don't. I I want to say Biotish did not start his first year with the Cowboys either. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. So 
You know, I think they the had uh, I forget who they had in there, but once he got in, he never gave a job back. Yeah. Yeah, I like Tanner Borlean. I like Looney. It might have been Looney, yeah, because Looney was a guard center. Yeah, had some flex, and he was like just good fun for the Cowboys, but he wasn't really. He didn't move the needle. Yeah. Tanner yeah, Borlean feels big. good. Yep. And like we were talking about with the athleticism, dude tested out 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 the roof. So yeah. Ooh, and so this is our second. And this is our last pick of the draft. Um. Ooh, Isaiah Davis. You could talk me into that. Um, doubling down at running back. I'll be honest. So, so, so question, why are you just talking about that? What do you think about the Cowboys running back room? What is your opinion right now on Dowdle, Vaughn, you know, Trey Benson, Davis, well, and, and Ben, well, yeah. And Benson, we are our, our, our new, our new toy, Trey Benson. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'll be honest with you because I do see a, a year or two jump from Hunter Lupke in the scheme. Yep. And how they want to use him in short yardage package and just how much that Mike McCarthy trusts him, I feel fine. But I also wouldn't mind double dipping. Yeah. Um, I think that I'm a big Isaiah Davis fan. And this is exactly – I'm actually working on a, a piece where I'm doing late-round sleepers because Dallas needs to hit on undrafted late-round sleepers, and yeah. he's one of my guys. Another guy that's on this available is Curtis Jacobs. Um so Jacobs is – he's not your typical – he's not your typical Michael Parsons, Sean Lee, Penn State backer because he's he's light. But the problem with Jake – I mean, but Jacobs, he does show some things on film that it's like, man, you know, he runs around, was at the Senior Bowl, um, but, he, you know, he's too – he's I wouldn't say he's light, but he's not – he doesn't – he's he's 241. He, he, he came in at 241. Um, yeah. And at the Shrine Bowl, he wasn't amazing, but he's a guy who can come down, run down on teams, and he does have some flashes on film. Those big, I just, I, I'll bet on a Big Ten back. I, I always bet on a Big Ten linebacker to come in. Okay. But now that we talk about, let's go down the board a little bit. Um, you know, there goes to his little brother. Oh wow, I don't know, man. You might got to stop at Darius Masai. Um, um, I didn't even know that he was available. Carter Bradley is also an interesting name if you wanted to go quarterback and just get depth. But I mean, Cooper Rush, they they do have plans for Trey Lance, especially in the preseason. Yeah, I think that that's uh. Now that I see Darius Masao, everything changed. So just forget everything I just said. If you guys are watching this video, <laughs> Darius will be the pick. I love this film. When you're watching, Latu Latu. When you're watching even the other defensive end from UCLA, you can't help but watch Darius Masao uh, uh, just 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 flash on film. He, now, the problem is he's a shorter backer. He went to the Shrine Bowl, and he just made play after play. He's a thumper, plays downhill, little limited athletically. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, a lot limited athletically. So you got to keep him in that radius. Yes. Just playing downhill. But he's the guy who I want sitting behind. Eric Kendricks, because he could be your Ivan Pace type. Who's, yep. If he's in the right scheme and he's only doing this, he could be a good player. Darius Masao is the last pick of our draft. Oh, one more. Oh, we got, oh, we got two. I'm sorry. I'll try, to, I'll try to take your pick, Zach. I'm sorry. Sir. Oh, no, no. You're good. You're good. <laughs> we're going to talk, talk through it. You, This is getting in the range now to where it's like we're deep in the draft. So if you've made it this far, you talk, you talk about the player because we're way down here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So let's let's look at all let's look at all our available. Um, and you know this is probably this is probably around the the, the spot of that draft where this is where we call the uh, the Dane Brugler special. Yes. <laughs> and and this, these are guys that we may not know about. Let's go to the running back room. Uh, oh, Zach. Hold on one second. I do I do recognize this name, Cedric Johnson from Ole Miss, teammate of Sam Williams, also uh. Very, like a very athletic guy. You know, a ten point eight percent pass rush win rate. He does have the athletic tools. I'm, I can't remember what his RAS was. Mm. I believe it was pretty high. We talked about the edge room. Definitely wouldn't be a bad idea to add some bodies there because you did lose Dante Fowler. Sam Williams is going to get a lot of reps this year. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence is starting to, you know, he's getting up in age. So adding an athletic edge guy definitely wouldn't be a bad idea. Now yeah. that you speak through it. Edge is definitely 
Lewis, losing Dorrance Armstrong is a sneaky underrated loss. I don't think it's a loss to where you lose sleep at night, but it's one of those losses that says, okay, if you know you just talked about his teammate, if Sam Williams doesn't take that jump, do you get ahead of it? We also spoke about this pre-show. Could you flip everything on his back and go edge early if a guy falls and you know kind of move some of your needs down the board? Yeah, that's 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 kind of like so what you you kind of just sold me on a player. Let's look at the running back room, but I'm not mad. I actually need to add Cedric Johnson to oh, my watch list real real quick. Um, a nine point six seven relative athletic score at um, wow. two hundred and sixty pounds. He ran a four six three. Yeah, sign me up. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, now, now, now this is really good. Ten yard split, thirty eight inch vertical, ten foot broad jump. The dude is athletic. That's now. Let me ask you this, Zach. Before we make this pick, do we know <clears throat> or does Zach know how does Zimmer want to deploy his edges? We know how Dan Quinn wants to deploy his edges. Yeah. Is is Zimmer looking for a different type of edge? So Quinn wanted guys just flying up the field. That yes, was the he whole did. thing. Get the whole D line south, fly up the field. Um I can't say that I watched a ton of Zimmer in yeah. Minnesota, but I do believe his philosophy was sort of bigger guys, mm -hmm. bigger bodied, um, you know, stop the run. Daniil Hunter was a bigger body. Bigger body guy. Um, and he, what he asked Daniil Hunter to do, he asked him to play the run, kind of yeah. like what what he'll ask Demarcus Lawrence to do. Yes. Um, that's why it's so interesting to see. I, I'm really interested to see what he asked Michael Parsons to do. But this guy, Cedric Johnson, what's his athletic – that RAS score is out, out off the charts. What's his build? He is okay in the size grade. Okay. He's six foot three, 260, so a little light. Yeah. Uh, a little short and a little light in the paint. Okay, okay cool. Um, so, let's go to the running back room, but I think that might be the pick because I still – you know, you, at the seventh round, you bet no trace. Okay, cool. So, quick question. Trey Benson's in the running back room. Well, before we look to these guys, Trey Benson's in the running back room, Rico Dowdle, Deuce Vaughn, Hunter Lipke. That's four right now, right? Yes. And then you got some other guys mixed in there. If you do draft a running back, who's the odd man out? Or Ooh. odd two out if the Cowboys decide to keep just three? Because you mentioned Lipke maybe taking a step forward. So I'm curious to what you think of the running back room. It would have to be Deuce Vaughn. Um Mm. And and which is the tough conversation you have to have. That's what it, I was wondering. It's a tough one. Now I'm gonna tell you a name here too. Is Carson Steele? Um, um, let's go to his profile. I want to see how big Carson Steele is. I think I've watched like one game of his. Oh, he's good. He's yeah. good size. Yeah, he's good size. Six, <laughs> five. Um, I think Dallas last year, and I think that Mike McCarthy looked at it and said there were just times where we weren't physical enough. Like there were runs. There were just times where we just couldn't punch it in. And I think that's like in drafting Trey Benson, I think that people don't understand how big of a back Trey Benson is. He's 6'1. Yeah. He's yeah. one of the actually one of the taller backs in his in his. It's just his he's so cut and built. Yeah, he doesn't look that he almost looks like a slightly bigger Kenneth Walker. Yes. Same frame. That's a yeah. great name. And so I think this is a, a, a position what, – what, we haven't looked at the corners yet. Let's go to the corners real quick, Zach, and then we'll make our pick because I think I want to go with the edge player. But even still, you you bring up a great point about running back because there's – no. I mean, we like Deuce Vaughn, but again, there were just times where, hey, if Deuce Vaughn is going to be a third-round back only and now you just drafted Trey Benson, he catches the ball well at the backfield. And Florida State didn't even deploy him the way that they could have. Yeah, I'm not liking what I'm seeing in the cornerback room. Let's go back to the edge. <laughs> a little uh, light in the cornerback room. Yeah, we're, let's go back to the edge. Now, I like that pick, Zach. Um, and we're, and we're betting on traits, yep. and then we'll, we'll we'll hit every all the rest of our needs in, in undrafted free agency. Let's do it. Yeah, man, I can't wait to see how this looks when you look at the whole body of work. Um, I feel like we did some good stuff here. Um, oh wow. A grade for Bronson. I, that's what I said. I think that that would be an A grade. Oh wow, A minus for for Bordolini. I, I I love this draft, bro. I like it a lot. Yeah. What, what do you What do you think we got the most value? 
honestly, as high as I am on Trey Benson, it, yeah. it's, it's between Brian Thomas Jr. Because mm -hmm. he changes your offense, adds a vertical threat, um, you know, pretty big guy. Him and CD Lamb, that combo, I mean, might be unstoppable. But Trey Benson <laughs> is my is my you know top rated running back. I had an early second round grade on him, so I would say he you know between pick forty to sixty was about where I would guess he's going to go in the draft. I'm not sure if he falls to the third or not. But honestly, that was my that's my favorite value pick in this draft. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you, Zach. I think that you talking us into Tanner Bordellini was the best value here. Um, and I say that because we don't know how good Hoffman is. Um, and I think that we're just penciling guys in because they're taking pictures with the Cowboys, but I don't want to just yeah, like I don't want to live and die by that. I want to overcorrect some of the issues that we had last year. And I'm gonna say this. Being able to get Christian Haynes in the second round, the film that I saw is flawless. Yep. Um, was never on the ground, ever on the ground. Um, played with power, played square. You could plug him into an Alabama O-line or a, a Michigan O-line. Wouldn't miss a beat. So to me, in yep. what he did at the senior bowl, I thought was outstanding. So I think that those were actually our two best value picks. There's going to be a receiver that you love at 24. Yeah. Um, in this draft, because the receivers, they're just that deep. And I believe that six quarterbacks are going to go in the top 12 picks. I just believe that. So that's going to push the tackle and numbers. Tackles. Yep. That, that's going to push the tackle numbers back, which will push the receivers back. And you'll end up with a CD lamb, Justin Jefferson situation. It happens every year. With this draft, imagine this offensive line. If Bordellini has a really good training camp, he beats out Hoffman. Yeah. Christian Haynes is a top, almost a top 50 pick. You'd start plug him in at left guard. Well, how much different does your offensive line look compared to what you went into training camp with? You have Bordellini at center. You have Haynes at left guard. You have Tyler Smith at left tackle. Feel pretty good. A 23 year old Tyler Smith who already was NFL ready as far as power. Yep. He was NFL ready. Yep. I think people forget, Zach, he played – I mean, he trained all offseason at guard and was thrown into the tackle room a, Oh yeah, yeah. a couple weeks before the first game. Yep. And, 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 and made his way. I think that people are kind of overreacting to the tackle deal. If you want to look at a position that you may want to upgrade, it would be guard. If yep. you want to and, – and, and we love T.J. Bass – but if I got a Haynes staring at me, because he's not going to go in the first round, guards not going in the first round. Yeah. So I, I feel really good about this draft, man. I feel I, I feel like this will be one that nails it out out the park for sure. I like this a lot for sure. I I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a video. I'm glad we got together and we're able to do a mock draft for everybody. Yeah, yeah. You guys, uh, if you guys want more of this, man, I think we could probably do a couple more. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just a great, it's a great exercise, especially a seven round because it's really, it really pushes you, yeah. um, to really think how are we gonna piece the roster together with these pieces? Okay, yeah. Brian Thomas Jr. I love the, the what we said pre-show and what you said pre-show, Zach, about hey, check this out, guys. Brandon Cooks isn't on your roster long term. Mm -hmm. That's a need. You yep. don't want to wait until next year for it to be a super need. Let's get him out the way. Some of the other uh, examples that you use with Tanner Borlini, I really like it, man. Thank you so much, man. This was this was awesome, bro. Yeah, dude, a lot of fun, and I'm I'm glad we could do it. We're definitely gonna do more. Draft season is uh is awesome. It's like one of the best times of the year. Yeah, and you guys keep supporting Double Move, man. Double Move, thank you for having me yeah. on your spot. Thank I know you, these Foots, both sides for man. hitting me up. <laughs> let's keep working, bro. Yeah, dude, let's do it. And for all you guys who support us, thank y'all so much. Peace. Yep. Thank y'all. Peace.